You're listening to the What is a Woman podcast, hosted by the Catholic Family Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the What is a Woman podcast. My name is Holly, and as always, I'm joined here with my mother, Mandy. We're happy to be back for another episode, and we'll begin by saying, Jesus, Jesus meek and humble of heart, heart make my heart, heart like, like unto, unto thine. thine. Okay, just so, your heart. Just I don't get my heart. <laughs> Sorry, no, just my heart today. <laughs> See, we do start our podcasts off lively and fun. I don't know why. I think I've been saying that prayer a lot personally, like myself. So I just, yeah, you know, that's okay. Out of habit. But anyway, so yes, Jesus, make all our hearts like unto thine. Um, anyway, so very happy to be back and it's funny because i'm chuckling to myself about last week how we said we were talking about how kevin and matt in the mornings they're just, are yeah. different every day and ours are just the same yeah they even changed their picture this last Ooh, week <laughs> well maybe we need to change <laughs> our bacon picture. and eggs or something is oh. going on there i didn't actually i can't remember but but anyway about breakfast <laughs> well to start our podcast off with a little bit of drama 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 um good drama not good drama well i don't know anyways um my kids and I were in a very bad car accident on Monday this week, so I just wanted to put out a gentle reminder to everybody to please, please, please say your road prayers and always be grateful to your guardian angels because yeah. they really, really do look out for you. And this accident was proof of that because... Um, it was extreme. It was extreme. Um, totaled. Car totaled. My car is totaled. It's gone. Around a pole. Around a pole. And some it wasn't my fault. Somebody had ran... Well, she didn't run the stop sign. She was stopped at the stop sign. I didn't have a stop sign. And she decided when I got to the intersection that she was going to go through the intersection. And what I think, because the impact of the crash was so severe, I think what she was trying to do was she was trying to beat go through the like oh i got enough time i can go because she really picked up speed or she really hit or else there might have been a blind spot or it could have been a blind spot or Or anything she thought you were going to stop because she thought it was a four-way stop not a two-way stop but either way i did not have a stop sign and i was going fairly it's a it was a country road so i was going country highway highway so i was going yeah it is a highway so i was going pretty fast my daughter was in the front seat my son was in the back we were on our way to school and she, she, we connected, and then she my hit, car spun. She hit your daughter's she side. She hit my daughter's side pretty bad, and then the car spun out, and I hit a pole. So it was it was scary. It was terrifying, and um, but we walked out of the crash with just a couple bruises. Yeah, uh, everybody, all three. Everybody, people. all three of us. Not not even a drop of blood was spilt. Yeah. And the woman that hit you too. And the woman that hit me too was perfectly fine. Right. She had and a well. It was radioed over that she had a non-life threatening leg injury. And, and um, you can tell. You should tell a story about Ava. Oh, about her saving my son. Yeah. Yeah. So she. So I had a minivan, and all. So what happened when she hit us? Every airbag in my minivan went off. Right. Airbags down the side windows, airbags in the back, airbags in the front, and the car just filled with what I thought was smoke, but it was it was the dust, dust particles yeah. from the airbags coming out. Yeah. I couldn't see a thing. Right. Not a thing. Like it's like picture yourself in something and then just a life raft inflates. Yeah. And covers your whole car. Right. So we, when we spun out, then I hit the pole, and we're in, we're trapped inside this car, and my son was screaming, and I never want to hear that scream again in my life, and he couldn't get out, right. and the car was filled with what we thought was smoke, but it was from it was dust from the airbags, but I thought it was smoke, and it smelled so bad, and uh, I, you know, my first instinct is to get myself out, because if I can't get myself out, then I can't help them, so I'm trying to open my door, and it was kind of stuck, and then my daughter... <laughs> I'm laughing because of the way my daughter told us. <laughs> the, the, the crash was already done. It was over. But she whipped her glasses off because she said to me after, she said, Mom, if my glasses were going to break, I didn't want glass in my eye. So I whipped them off and I chucked them. And I'm like, okay, that's nice, Ava. <laughs> and so, so she chucks her glasses and then she just leans back and she goes, come on, Doug. And she grabs him. And she scoops him up and she pulls.
pulls him out of the car like she's like this hero. Well, she was because he was terrified. He didn't know what to do. He was in shock. And she pulls him out of the car and they run around to the side. And then we're standing there and a bunch of people had stopped to help us. And there was this lady and she was rubbing their backs and making sure they were okay. And then all of a sudden Ava goes, where are my glasses? I can't find my glasses. Where are my glasses? And I, we're all looking for these glasses. And I look over. I go, Ava, they're in the middle of the road. <laughs> and at the time, we were in shock. So we were just kind of standing there. But then she had told me after. She goes, I threw my glasses, Mom. I threw those glasses right off. Yeah. I'm like, Ava, oh, she's very theatrical. Yeah. That's what we'll say. <laughs> But uh, well, it so was, we're just also grateful. We're also grateful and just extremely grateful to my guardian angel, our guardian angels. Yeah. Um, clearly looking out for us because even the officer told me not many people walk away from a crash like this. Yeah. Like they don't always die, but he goes, they very seldomly just walk away and continue on with their day. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. It was, it's kind of a miracle. It's kind of a miracle. And uh, I would call it a miracle. hundred yeah. percent. So always just a big strong I reminder. Said, I said a rosary for then Thanksgiving. Yeah. Yeah. So. And and I keep my van, like I have, you know, the Guardian Angel visor clip, the St. Christopher visor clip, the St. Joseph visor clip, my... So you're well, you're my, well uh, uh, covered in visor clips. And, well, and this is another <laughs> thing too. My van was blessed. Yeah. I had father, when I got this van, I haven't even had this van a year. Yeah. And uh, when we got the van, I had Father bless the van. So it, for, so just so everybody knows, you can have your cars blessed, right? By a priest. Yeah. There's a special blessing for vehicles, and um, and what I usually keep holy water in my van too, but I didn't have any. But that's another reminder too. If you don't have, keep holy water in your van, right? Because. Especially for member people that have members of their family that aren't Catholic. Yeah. And you get in a moment like that. Uh huh. You can perform if someone is dying by the side of the road and they want to be baptized. You can well, perform the baptism. Well, not with holy water. It's regular water for baptism. Oh, I thought it, I thought it said Father told us at the meeting if you don't have holy water, you can use regular water. No, no, it's regular water. Oh, I well. Okay, now sure. you're now you're making now me we, question this. I, well, I was, I'm, pretty I'm pretty sure, sure it's regular water. If anybody knows, if anybody knows, maybe drop yeah, it in the comments. This is pretty sad for us. But we, I better consult Father on that because he gave us those lessons. Well, I know how to do it. <laughs> yeah. I will tell you, he did tell us that you have to make sure that when you pour the water, it goes over their head, and you the words that you have to say are very specific. specific. You cannot just go blur it. Blur, like you have you to, say, have to in know the name of in the, the name of the, the Father, Father, the Son, and, and the, the, the Holy Ghost. Ghost. I baptize thee in the, like so. It has to be very so. I mean, I'm just using this as a reminder. It's it's good to it's good for us as Catholics to know how to be prepared for these things. Right. And something like this really shakes you, and it it says you're not prepared. So go and learn what you need to learn uh -huh. so that you, you can, you know, that's what I feel these things are. I feel like they're little moments that shake us and jolt us and say. But you were, you were very pleased with how well your daughter handled it. I was very pleased. I, and now I know that she will not crack. She's not a cracker under pressure person. Yeah, she you know? doesn't. She doesn't go. Oh, no, no. no, she and, like know. she literally was like duck duck. And she was like you know very calm and very not she was in shock but she just jumped right into action yeah she jumped right into action she didn't scream she didn't yeah i'm like i i remember as we were spinning out i can't remember exactly what i said but i was like we're gonna crash we're gonna crash. and i was kind of like you know panicking <laughs> I, and but what really panicked me i will say is that i couldn't see right yeah all of a sudden like can you imagine being in a car and you're spinning out and you can't see now, that'd be terrifying. It's terrifying. Like, in the air And then you're just waiting for the impact. Well, and then you don't know where you're hitting. You don't know where you're going. And remember, I know we've been to Michigan, and we always talk about the ditches. Yeah. We got deep, deep we ditches, got ditches here. here. Michigan don't have ditches. Like, like you're, got going, ditches. you're going over a yeah. canyon, pretty yeah. much. I mean, that may be a bit extreme. But you go into that ditch, you can, you can flip your car. Oh, absolutely. You know, and and the other thing is, too, is then my daughter was saying, well, mom, now I need to know what we need to do. If we, if the car, if we're ever in this kind of accident again and the car flips over, how do I get out? 
Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if I just, you know, like, can we just, you know, <laughs> not think can about we, that? They're, they're going to have, a, as we said, they're going to have, gonna a have a little. They're going to have a little. Well, I had a moment of. P- the PT, I will say, PTSD is real. It is real. It is real. Because I was driving, I took them to school this morning, and then I was driving home, and I came, I did, again, I didn't have a stop sign. The other person had a stop sign, and he kind of inched out to see if he could go. It startled me. Yeah. I hit my brake. Yeah. Because I, I'm now, st- that's going to startle me for and the next little the while. And you said the kids, when you went, they didn't want to take that They didn't walk. want to take that way, and it's our way to school. And they said, Mom, please, please, take any other way. We don't want to go by that stop sign. Do not go that way. And I told them, I said, no. I said, we're not doing that. Yeah. I said, this is the way we go to school. We put our faith and we put our trust in God. Mm-hmm. We're not going another way. Yeah. I said, it's like a horse. When you get kicked off a horse, you got to get back on. You don't. You yeah. don't play these games. Right. Where you stray away from things because... A fear. Uh, that's just my personal belief that you are going to have PTSD. You are going to be traumatized. Yes, I've, I've had it before. But you don't let it run. You cannot let it run your life. You cannot yeah. fall into victim mentality. Yeah, I had a. It's I had a slippery an, slope. I had a experience with an ambulance one, and it was life altering. Yeah. And afterwards, I couldn't hear an ambulance. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, I could. I did hear ambulance. But it's it, like, tr- it triggers but it, you. you start to have a little bit of anxiety and yeah. your heart starts to race. And, yeah. And, you know, and you're just like, but I don't, that was, you know, 15 years ago. I can't exactly remember how long ago it was, but it was quite a while ago. And I, I it's gone now. I don't have it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't carry will, that on. Well, it, I'll tell you, it won't if you don't allow it. You the Then this is why I say we have to use these moments to either, you're either going to take something like this and you're going to put your faith and your trust back in God, or you're going to take something like this and you're going to let it destroy you. Oh, absolutely. You're going to let it run your life. You're going to, you know, because I had a moment the night that, the night of the day we had the accident, I'm laying in bed and I'm like, I could have died and I'm not ready. I know I'm not ready. But I say that prayer every single Sunday. Yeah. Asking God to help me accept the death that he has chosen for me. Right. So those words have to mean something. I have to believe it. Yes. You know, so obviously yesterday or Monday was not that day. Yeah. It could have been. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, well, now I got to use this as a moment to say, well, that was a close one. Right. Time to get serious. Time to get serious. You know? And, and, you know, and it was scary for my husband. He even said to me yesterday, he said, I could have lost my whole family yesterday or Monday. Well, it was, I'm getting these days mixed up because we're talking. Monday. It was, it was Monday. Monday. So the day after he said to me, I could have lost my whole family on Monday. Yeah. My whole so he family. was a little shaken. He was shaken up. And he, he considered a miracle. Yeah. He told, he said that. He said it too. You know, he said, that's a miracle. He said he's had two miracles in the, in the last, last month. Yeah. Two months or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. First our house and now this. So. Well, in his exact words, this is a little worldly, but he said, sometimes you just got to thank the big man upstairs. You know? <laughs> I'm like, yes, Jamie, yes. Every day. Every, Every day. day. And even when it's bad, you still got to thank you him. You still got to thank him. <laughs> Morning offering. <laughs> Evening prayers. <laughs> thank God. <laughs> you thank him. Every day. <laughs> right. You know? Right. But it just, anyway, so that was our little... Uh, our little here. shake And up. you know what's funny is I always say, we'll see you next week, but... You know what? Maybe yeah, we, I shouldn't say that anymore. You might we not. We might not see you next week. You might not see me next week. You know, we just we just never know. So just, you know. And a good reminder to make use of the sacraments if they're available to you. Right. Confession is not. I know it's, you know, our Catholic duty to make sure we go to confession and communion once a year. That's yeah, what's said. The bare minimum. The bare minimum. But why do you want to do the bare minimum, you know? Yeah. If you have those sacraments, make full use of them because I tell ya, you, we don't know. The hour know. in the moment. The hour in the moment has already been decided and we don't know. And it could be tomorrow. Could be tomorrow. Okay. So anyways, let's, uh, do we have anything else we want to say or do? I don't know. I think we're just too overwhelmed by. We're too overwhelmed. By the near death experience. I will say it has been a couple of very dramatic months for me. I find everything dramatic. And then, you know, your call, this is going on. And then my brother's calling from Sarnia to say, you have to come get us. The car broke down. And I'm just like, oh, it never (laughs) ends. I will say though, you know, for somebody who has such a dramatic life, I was (laughs) telling I don't want to say that. I don't have that dramatic of a life. But I think everybody has I a dramatic, dramatic life. life. But I will say, though, I do have moments where 
<laughs> I said to my mom, I said, you know, this was, was it Sunday? Oh, yeah, because we went to that thing for Amy. Anyways, we were, I was driving with my mom, and I said, it was Sunday evening. And I said to her, I said, do you know what I did today? I said, I sat in my recliner chair, because it's Sunday. You're supposed to take the day nice and easy and give it to God. Yeah. So I decided, you know, I wasn't going to do work or anything. I sat in the reclining chair in my window, and I read a whole book. Yeah. The whole book, front to cover, of St. Monica. Right, yeah. And my mom said, I want your life. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't complain too much. That's what I did yeah. Sunday. I read a whole book from front to cover about St. Monica because I thought, you know, um, usually Sundays I putter around. I mean, we are moving, so I would pack a little box. And I thought, no, I'm really going to try to take this seriously where we just give the day to God and make sure we do things that are pleasing to God and keep the day as holy as we possible can possibly can. Yeah. So I, I, I did take a small nap yeah. <laughs> in between about chapter seven and eight. I yeah. think. <laughs> I'm going to start that. I never get a chance, but I'm going to start napping. It's going to be napping, take a nap. And then, you know what? I had a little, and it wasn't a long nap. It was maybe an hour. Uh -huh. And then I got back up and I just was like, well, there's nothing. I'm going to keep reading. So I just kept reading, you know? Right. So anyway. and you learned a lot about, and St. I learned Mon a lot about St. Monica, a lot, a lot. And you told me a lot. You're very yeah. inspired by and then that. I oh, what was the big the thing you learned to... about St. Monica? Oh, there's a misconception I've heard before that she kicked out St. Augustine. Yeah. And I'd like to say... Augustine? The... Do you know say Augustine? Oh, have I been saying it wrong? I don't know. I'm just... I always say Augustine. Augustine? Yeah. Augustine? 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 Oh, What do no. you think? Who's right? Who's right? <laughs> <laughs> Weigh in in the comments. <laughs> Holly's way or Mandy's way? <laughs> um, but anyways... I've heard it said that, that she kicked him out. And it's it's often when we're dealing with um, troubled children, we fall back on that, well, St. Monica kicked out her son. And that's not true. So I want to set the record straight because according to this book, what happened was St. Augustine, Augustine, fell in with the Manchians. Yeah. That religion or whatever. So... He came home. He, was, he wasn't even living at home. He did not live there. So he was an adult. He was an adult. He was 19. And he oh, was in not an, 19. Well, yeah. that's still, back then, that's probably that a, was an adult. Right. So he was away at this scholarly school in another town, and he had come home for vacation. And he came in, and he was sitting at the table with St. Monica, and he started to preach to her about Manchians and that she was wrong and that and then he really started to insult God right and she said to him and it says in this book she said to him directly and plainly you will not sit at my table and speak this way if you are going to speak this way you will not be welcome to my table or my house yeah he got up and he left right that is not kicking somebody out of your house. Right, right. That's saying, you cannot speak this way in my home. You cannot disrespect God in my home. Right. If you're going to do that, you will not be welcome here. Right, right. He made the choice to get up and leave. And then it even goes on further to say that they ne from that day forward, until he converted to Christianity, they never, they never spoke religion religion again yeah and he never and it says in this book he never treated his mother with a cruel word word or disrespect he was always respectful to her and he was never cruel to her never yeah they had a very amicable relationship right they just did not speak about religion yes and saint monica took all of that mm -hmm. all that suffering all that hurt and she got on her knees and she prayed 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 and sacrificed right and i'm going to say speaking as an adult who's lived through adult children that's your only recourse that's all you can do do not try to convince people no it's much better that you never speak of it again, again. yeah right and then you just take it to, to god. god yeah like that's say Monica's the example of she, that. She is the perfect example for mothers. Like and read this book. Yeah, it's, it's a short. Like when I say I read a whole book, it's a, it's a hundred pages. Right, it's not very long. It's more. It's a short. It's a very short. I mean, it's a book. Yeah, it's from Tan, but it's uh, it's a really good book, and it's a it's an easy read. 
and that's I I'm a simple person I believe that about myself yeah. I just like little facts yeah. and little stories to the point not a lot of big words that I have to sit and decipher. Like, this book is great, but I could not read it on my own without my mother. And that's me humbly admitting that because it's the truth. Right. I don't understand when they throw out all these big words and they're like, I just want a nice story. Yeah. Okay. I just want a nice story about a saint that I can reflect on and I can say, hmm, I'm going to do that. So even when I was parenting my own children this morning, I, rem I went back to that book and I remembered directly and plainly calm to the point yeah so that they can get it yes you made a mistake you're wrong you did this duh yeah. done you know like not we don't need all this yelling we don't need all this forceful anger we don't need all this and i'm really trying to like in every moment when i read these stories saint monica saint rita is the same St. Monica and St. Rita are the perfect example for Christian mothers. That is why they are the patron saints yes. of Christian mothers. You need to read their stories. You need to understand how they lived, the way they lived, and why they lived. And St. Monica's husband was converted because of her. Yes. And because of her silence and her prayer and her sacrifice. No other reason. Yes. She converted her mother-in-law, and she converted every servant in their household. Right. And her mother-in-law was mean to her. Right. She was very mean to her. She did not like her at all. And she sat with her on her deathbed, and she converted. And then when the mother-in-law actually converted before her husband, he said she was so taken with how his, mo his mother had changed. Yeah. And she told him, it's your wife. It's Monica. It's your wife that yeah. has done this. And he, he, this is how, I was telling my mom, this is how her husband converted, according to this book. He grabbed her by the arm, like a nice grab, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah. walk arm in arm, out in the garden. And he pulled her out to her favorite spot. And he said to her, Monica, I, I want to become a Christian. I want to have what you have. Yeah. Like, can you imagine? Beautiful. A lifetime of prayer and sacrifice. Yeah. And then just just like that. Yeah. You know, like God will deny nothing to his saints. Nothing. That nothing. and that's something actually to remember because that's what I learned because you know, I was living as if you if you um go back many podcasts ago and I told you about what happened with my husband, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, "How how do I how do I fix this?" Yeah. Like I I was taken with how do I fix this, right? Mm -hmm. And I read that somewhere, that God denies nothing of his saints. Yeah. And that there is no time. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, you know, you can't say, well, that's done and over with. No. And it can't be fixed. Well, it certainly can because God says it can be fixed. And God can do anything and he wants. And God can wants. do anything he wants. And he knows what's coming in the future and all this stuff. So the bottom line was, for me, well, then I have to become a saint. Yeah. If God denies his saints nothing, I want to be the person that God looks at and gives me. But the problem is, is God denies his saints nothing, but they're saints. So they don't, I don't think they really ask for much. No, they ask for the salvation of saints. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all they're asking for. Right. They don't right? ask for new houses, and cars, new, yeah. money, better jobs. Yeah. They're happy with it. They're happy in the hole they're put, put in. in. Yeah. And they want the salvation of the souls. souls. And God to be glorified. And I think that, that you know, the Saint, the story of St. Monica is that's all her whole life. That's all she wanted. And I can't remember the name of the priest. There was a priest or a bishop. I can't remember exactly in the book. It's There were so many good facts. But he said to St. Augustine, he said, she was alive. They were alive and they're having this conversation. Mm -hmm. And she came to him crying and she just poured her heart out to this bishop. Sorry, I said say to St. Augustine. He said to St. Monica, this bishop said yeah. to her, God will not deny your prayer. Yeah. He's like, if this is how you are. Yeah. He didn't say in these exact words, but he said, God will hear your prayer. I can guarantee you that. Well, interestingly enough, there's a book um, written by St. Augustine. Confessions. Confessions. I want right? to get it, yeah. Or, no, the sermons. Oh, sermons? Sermons of St. Augustine. Yeah. Right? And he has a sermon, and, and these sermons curl your hair a little bit yeah like i remember reading it quite a long time ago and they're so harsh and they're so you know like they're harsh yeah you know like you were not going to save your soul blood you know like it they're harsh and there was a chapter in there that i read on why god does not answer prayers oh, okay right and i i 
the book was actually in pieces, and I was just picking up pieces oh, your of books it here. are always in pieces. <laughs> well, you know, it's a rotten tan job. job. <laughs> you know, like the, or the bindings. You know what I mean? I know, I know. <laughs> so, and it's a fat book, so it was very easy, easy for it to fall into yeah, pieces. Yeah. But anyway, so um, when I read that, and it kind of stuck with me because I'm like, man, this is harsh. Yeah. Like, this is a harsh sermon. Like, if the priest got up and they gave this sermon, Whew. I know. I, I think the I think the, uh, the pews in. might empty. empty. <laughs> you know, but it was you know basically you know the more the more holy you become, the more God listens to your prayers. Right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I know that sounds a little harsh, and and I don't. I don't want to give a harsh sermon like St. Yeah. Augustine. I'm yeah. not St. Augustine. And I feel like that's better left for the for priest. Three. So we, we, we'll just read that book. <laughs> <laughs> just read the book. And then you might say, okay, okay, is this why my prayers never seem to get answered? Right. You know, and to constantly, this is my, this is my only advice in this. If you feel like your prayers are not getting answered, look to yourself for correction. correction. Yeah. Say, what do I need to correct? Yeah. What do I need to straighten out? <coughs> God bless Excuse you. Me. God Thank bless you. you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then and that's how you get towards getting your prayers answered. Yeah. And one one more thing about Saint Monica because this probably to me was the most beautiful line in the whole book. Well, I found her husband's conversion very beautiful, but. They're, they were coming back from somewhere, and I can't remember where, but they were in, I think, Otis or something. And they were from, I can't pronounce, Tagast, I think was the name, Tagast, I might not be pronouncing that right, but they were journeying, journeying home. St. Augustine's already converted, um, it's been a long time, and she's dying, and she's sick. And they know, she knows she's not going to make the rest of the journey. She knows she's going to die. And she turns to St. Augustine, and she says, bury my body uh, I can't remember the exact words but it's basically bury my body here bury my body anywhere I don't care just yeah. remember me when you go to the altar of God right. because he was so concerned actually I think it was one of their companions not St. Augustine was so concerned about her making it home because you got to remember like it was a big deal to do these journeys well, right I'm sure it was like yeah. so to be like to take a body it's not like a simple loading it on a plane and go oh we well, gotta take you this tell body me they back. were actually in africa they're in, yeah saint monica is actually in pre was born it was roman territory but what's now known as present day africa yeah algeria yeah to be exact um but she was from africa yeah that con it wasn't africa then but mm -hmm. um so anyway so but how beautiful is that, that she's dying and, and a lot of people are like concerned when they die, like, oh, where am I going to be buried or what's going to happen to me? And she, her only concern to her son when she's dying, she says to him, just remember me when you go to the altar of God. Basically, my body doesn't matter. It's over. But yeah. do not, whatever you do, forget me when you go to the altar of God. Right, right. You know, that is something very beautiful to take away. And to say, you know, if that doesn't put it into perspective for you, what we should be living for and attaining, and if, we're, if you're not living for heaven, yeah, your priorities are not correct. Everything's messed. Everything is messed. You know, mm -hmm. and that for me was like, well, you know, I hope when I die, that's on my lips. Yeah, yeah. You know, like that's the way I'm thinking, you know, so. Right. Anyways, b great book, beautiful book. I like a good saint story. It's simple, <laughs> easy read. Exactly. So if you're out there like me and you like the simple, easy read, <laughs> nice and simple. I'm reading one about, oh no, I finished it. Look at me. I didn't remember. I finished The Cure of Ours. Another simple, easy read. <laughs> he is another great story. Yeah. And what's funny, have I told you about our saint litany when no. we say our prayers? No. I thought I did. Uh, you may have. I've so I've, ta I've taken all these saints on as patron saints, okay? Yeah. So... After the kids and I, we say our morning prayers and we say our night prayers. I always go through these saints. We always start with St. Joseph. And we just say, St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Philomena, pray for us. St. John Mary Vianney, pray for us. St. Rita, pray for us. And then I go into our confirmation saints. So St. Genevieve, pray for us. St. Teresa, pray for us. St. John, pray for us. And then we've chosen St. Paul for my husband. So we say, St. <laughs> Paul, pray for us. Okay? 
Well, and then I add on the saint of the day because you got to have the <laughs> saint of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting quite the you're getting so your getting, own lady. Uh, well, now I've added Saint Monica. Right. So each time I read a book, <laughs> I had a new saint. <laughs> but anyway, so the other day, then I said, "Oh, who was it?" I said, uh, "Oh, it was Saint Jerome." It was back when it's Saint Jerome's feast day. I said, "Saint Jerome, pray for us." And then we say, "In the name of Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, Amen." And then we're done. And my daughter goes, "Mom, are you just trying to make this the longest possible thing you can?" <laughs> She's like, how many saints are you going to add? Because that was the first day I decided, well, we better start including the saint of the day. That, right. Like, it's his day. <laughs> we should include him. So Ava's like, Mom, we're going to be here all day. And then she's just a kid, right? They're allowed those little weak moments. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm like, well, Ava, we have to include the saint of the day. She said, okay, the saint of the day, but it's getting too long, Mom. <laughs> Like, well, there's just so many good ones out there. How can you, you know? How can you narrow it down? You can't. So anyways, that's just something. If you, ladies, I, it's just, I, I'm always trying to find ways for the kids to feel like when we're praying that it's, you know, that it means, I know it means something, but to make it more personal, you know? Yeah. So anyways. Should we dive into our book? <laughs> yeah, do we have any time left? Yeah, yeah, we got half an hour. Okay, great. Um, so we're still on this chapter, um, what's it called? Uh, Desire of Pleasing, Vanity. And I and I told you that yeah. when I was going through, and hopefully we can just whiz through the end of this chapter, but what I found out, which I didn't know when we started this chapter, what they mean by desire of pleasing and vanity. Because I thought desire of pleasing was kind of odd because right. that's what we should be doing. We should be trying to please other people. So I didn't really figure in my head, I thought, how is, I was actually kind of anxious to find out how is what? desire of pleasing vanity? Yeah, like that they don't seem like they go together. They don't seem like they go together to me. Well, that's because... What the author means is desire of pleasing, and what I mean is de desire of pleasing is two different things. And I so when I was looking it over, I'm like, desire of pleasing? They're talking about flirting. Yeah. Right? So when they say desire of pleasing, what they're talking about is being a flirt. Right. Because I imagine flirt, flirting wasn't a word back then. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe, like it may, it maybe it was their word. Maybe it wasn't their word. I don't know. See, but this is this is also the problem that happens um, when you change words. When you know, like certain um, words mean something else. Yeah, you know, time periods. They use certain words to mean Different. certain things. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know. There's so many now that like awful. Yes, we did awful that. Awful is one of those words where we mean yeah. it to be like awful, ugh, horrendous, awful, yeah. and awe. Full, like yeah. full of awe. Yes, we had know? that word in here, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and there, there's all kinds. There's all kinds. So yeah. it's it's really difficult to go back. I mean, I mean, did I mention the dinosaurs before? Well, you hear awful in hymns sometimes. Do you? Yeah, I, I there's a hymn. I'm pretty sure there's a hymn that has it, and mean, they literally mean full of awe. Yeah. To be full of awe, not like for God. Yes, right, right. So. But dinosaur is one because it's a new word. Yeah. So people, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but people go, well, how come there were no, di how come we didn't, well, they just made that word up. Yeah. Where are you going to see that word? It's just it's made, made up. up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like it's a new word. Yeah. So when they say, well, they never talked about, they didn't know about the, okay, we made that, that word, word up. up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they used to talk about dragons, not yeah, dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Yeah. That was their word for big creatures. creatures. You know, but anyway, that's another story. Story for another day. Another okay. story for another day. Let's talk about <laughs> Let's flirting. Let's talk about flirting. Okay, so quote, What has not sometimes been struck with admiration at the sight of one of those angels in human form who have consecrated their soul and their body to God, far from the world and its seductions, and whose beauty, though spiritual and heavenly, seems to borrow new charms from the simplicity of their dress? End quote. Okay, so, you know, after... When I read this, uh, clearly in my mind, I thought they're talking about nuns here. Mm -hmm. Right? So they've consecrated themselves to God. God right. Right? And you, we've all seen that in a nun. Right? You you know they sometimes they just glow. Yeah. 
you know, oh, none. <laughs> none. you know, they've constantly created themselves to, to God, you know, what's in the soul is shining forth, right? Mm-hmm. And then look at how they're dressed. Yeah. Right. You know, and all that stuff. Right. They're not wearing makeup. They're not doing anything. Yeah. And yet they're glowing. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of what the author is saying. Saying. OK. Right? So, quote, so true is it that costly apparel and study display are far from being necessary adjuncts of the that beauty which proceeds from within. End quote. Right. The outside in the inside don't match up. Right. Right. You know, so um, if we're so, and that can it, it can be. Uh, both ways right yeah so you can be all modest Mm -hmm. your attire but your insides don't match don't match your outsides and vice versa yeah right yeah you know like ways um you got all this glam going on outside but you're inside like you're you're paying all this attention Mm -hmm. to um outside beauty and we're all right we're gonna call it worldly beauty yeah and the inside is corrupt corrupt worldly worldly you know, vanity, mm-hmm. you know, like that kind of thing. So, okay. Quote, on the contrary, they frequently betray a deficiency of soul and a great barrenness of heart for the beauty, which springs from this source is altogether external, having no relation with the life and action of the soul and is forced to depend upon artificial means for that momentary luster, which it has need of in order to please end quote. Okay, so our, our momentary luster here is our flirting, right? That's oh. that's our desire of pleasing. Like, you know, you've got yourself all dulled up. up. Yeah. You're looking, you know, prettier than pretty. And you're out there and you're catching the eye of all the men. And they're fawning at your feet. Like, I think we mentioned Scarlett O'Hara. But, you know, yeah. of all the, all the men just, you know, fawning, fawning waiting. You know, that momentary luster of the beauty, yeah. right? But inside is corrupt yeah right and the mo- and actually to be truthful that momentary luster holds no weight right? right so i mean everybody knows that scarlett o'hara was a giant mm, you know yeah. she was not a nice, nice woman. woman yeah she used and abused men to no end yeah and women she abused and walked well, over anybody to get what she wanted and I also think momentary luster. Okay, so say a man falls in love with you because you're so beautiful and he's so attracted to your beauty. Yeah. And let's say he marries you. Right. That is called momentary luster because once that ring goes on and he's quote unquote tied to you for life, I know in this day and age that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But the beauty doesn't really matter so much anymore. Right. Because now... He has to live he with He has you. to live with your personality, not just your looks. Right. Exactly. You know, he's living with your personality. And, and if it's not great and if it's not holy, if it's not kind, that beauty is going to fade. Yeah. And it's not going to matter at and all. A- and actually, most people, if they've been around a beautiful woman, I mean, past the momentary luster, will very quickly come to the, your own conclusion that the beauty... It's not, not worth it. It's not worth it. Yeah. You know, it's not worth it at all. Mm-hmm. All right. So, quote, this kind of, oh, here we go. This kind of beauty is agreeable to the eye and captivates the senses, but it does not, like the other, reach the soul. Far from having a purifying influence upon the heart, it agitates it. Instead of lifting it to heaven, it lowers it to earth, yielding to a fatal illusion women frequently prefer an extrinsic beauty to that which springs from the soul and addresses itself to the soul neglecting the latter they bestow all their time and attention upon the former end quote right so it's it's very very common for women to sit stand in front of a mirror and i've got to have perfect eyes and perfect lips and perfect hair yeah perfect clothing right and the author is telling us that's really lowering ourselves. It's like it's, it lowers us to earth. Right. When we're supposed to be lifting ourselves to, to heaven. heaven. Yeah. Right. So we shouldn't, I mean, again, it's okay to make yourself presentable presentable and attractive. Yeah. But that is so secondary. Yeah. Like it has to be the virtues of the soul. Right. The You know, the woman that wants to attract St. Joseph or attract a good man and... 
let's put this out there she should want to attract saint joseph yes like and a lot of times and i've heard it said you know like that's just too boring yeah well you know yeah well sometimes you just get what you ask for sometimes boring it <laughs> It's great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially when you <laughs> when you start to get married, you know. Well, like it's, it's, you know what? Given what I know, yeah, I beg for boring. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, like boring is okay, ladies. Boring Don't let anyone okay. tell you any differently. <laughs> because it's a long life. It's a long life. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is a long life, and then when you get to be old, you realize like, how oh, short it's it a is. Short life. But while you're living it. <laughs> Yeah, and especially if you're living, if you if you sign yourself up for, you know, a little adventure. In the, yeah, adventure, yeah. <laughs> adventure. Yeah, you know, you just want the pain to end. Yes, the torture. Yeah, you signed yourself up for torture. Yeah, you know, so anyway, so we're supposed to be lifting. We're supposed to be looking to the soul to make to create the virtues and become virtuous so that we lift ourselves and those around us to heaven. Yeah. Well, and I'm going to say that someone once told me, and I thought this was very wise and very smart, um, that someone once told me that, you know, when we're thinking of the spiritual ladder, right? And yeah. You're, and you're climbing the spiritual ladder. She was looking for somebody who had to lift her up the spiritual ladder. Right. She didn't want to drag somebody up. Yes. To her level. Like she, what she was saying was she's not like she, everyone's at their own level. Right. She's not saying she's at a high level. Yeah. But what she was saying was, I want to be, I want to have a man who has to pull me up. Yes. To his level. Right. Right. Am I saying that right? Yes. No, right. You that's, know, that's like, correct. like, I don't want to have to pull somebody up to my level. Well, it's very, and I, and this is going back. So years ago, somebody said to me, uh, they got married. And they, they, you know, and, and they didn't really make a very good choice. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, well, I just picture us getting each other to heaven. Mm -hmm. That's what they said to me. And I'm just like, okay. I said, mm -hmm. I don't know what you think that means. Yeah. <laughs> I said, but there's only one way a person gets another person to heaven. Mm -hmm. They literally have to, to pick, pick them, them up, up and put, put them, them on their back and carry them. Yes. With tons and tons and tons of sacrificing yeah you know yeah. i said so if that's what you've signed up for <laughs> yeah if that because that's what that means, means. that's yeah. how you get another person to heaven mm -hmm. right and i and i said we have a delusion that we think you know i'll pray and they'll pray, pray and we'll all pray you know like i don't know like we're skipping through the field yes. picking daisies or something i don't know like it just doesn't work, work that, that way, way. Yeah. if you have to get somebody to heaven that's mm -hmm. what you have to do mm -hmm. you know it's like he ain't heavy he's my brother yeah they're literally carrying you. them yeah so if you're if you're if you're going to sign up for that just know. Just know. <laughs> it ain't going to be a walk in the park. It ain't going to be a walk in the park, right? Yeah. You know? So anyway, continue. There. Okay. Uh, quote. But they are commonly deceived in their calculations and please less in proportion to the efforts which they make to be agreeable. For no external advantage can replace in woman the charm which is found in a candid soul, an unaffected disposition and modest deportment. End quote. Right, so um, candid soul, an unaffected disposition, mm -hmm. which is an what that really means is a person in control of their own emotions. Yeah, right. That's what a unaffected disposition is, mm -hmm. and this is so important because we live in a world where um, we're supposed to let these uh, emotions run like wild horses or something, you know, and, yeah, and you're supposed to let everybody see it. And, and, you know, it's no, it's, you know, it's, everything's open and over everything. And, and a person, a candid soul has their emotions controlled in check in check. They are master over them. Yeah. They don't let their emotions be their, um, ruled by them. Right. Right. So I said, if I think as women, this is what we have to work on. Yeah. And sometimes I'm going to tell you a little trick I sometimes I do because if if I feel like my emo the other day I felt like my emotions were going to get out of control. Uh -huh. Like I I felt like I was about to um, lose my lose my cool. <laughs> what? I think I know what day you're talking about. 
Really? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, so this is what I did. You were like a teapot. Was I? <laughs> I might have been that day. <laughs> I know what day you're talking about. <laughs> well, anyway, and so I thought to myself, I was going to blow, right? And I was. I was going to blow. And this is what I did. I played this scenario out in my head. Because mm-hmm. I had a certain thing I want to say to somebody. I, I want to say. Oh, maybe I'm remembering this because you told me already. I remember this. Yeah. I want to say X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Right. And then and then I say, OK, now what are they going to say back to me? Yeah. And I knew what they were going to say back to me. Yeah. Right. They're going to say this back to me. Yeah. And then they're going to say that back to me. And then I'm going to say that like I, I played she, the whole <laughs> scenario out in my head. Yeah. And then how was this going to end? Yeah. And I knew how it was going to end. That people were like, well, if this is all too much for you. Then we're just not coming. Yeah. And I thought that's how um, this ends. Yeah. And I was like. Do you want this to end like that? Is mm-hmm. that w- what you're after here? Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, I do not want it to end like that. So let's take this back to the beginning and shut our mouth. <laughs> you know? And not, not blow, no. yeah. not lose our cool, right? And, and honestly. Uh, well, because I'm going to tell you, there is not a situation in this world. And if you have one. Feel free to share it in the comments, but I don't believe there's not a situation in this world other than Jesus overthrowing the tables in the temple. Yeah. Which, sorry, you guys, you don't get to use that excuse. You're not Jesus. Yeah. Um, where somebody has lost their cool and everything just goes exactly how it's supposed to. Right. No, no. no like, you- like you, when you lose your cool, it's literally called losing control. Right. You're losing control of yourself. You're losing control of the situation. Yes. You are, quote, unquote, just plain out losing control of everything. And you forfeit your right to be a sane, rational human being. And nobody is going to listen to you. Yes. Nobody. And I'm going to tell you, too. So what, what you want, what you're kind of looking for is people to change their ways and then to pity you. Right. Because you have to deal with all this. And and, and, I and that doesn't happen. Well, and it doesn't. And, and a lot of people say, well, Jesus oh, Jesus lost his temper and overthrew. The, I've heard it. I've heard people but, say that. And it's like, okay, but that was just anger. And he is God. And it wasn't controlled by emotion. And it wasn't controlled by emotion. So you cannot use that as an example. If, there, if you have an ounce of emotion in you. Yeah. Check yourself before you wreck, wreck yourself. Because that's what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, play it out in your head. You already know what that person is going to say to you. Yeah. who Whether yeah. it's your husband, whether it's your children, children. whether it's your mother, whoever it is, right? You mm-hmm. already know them. You know them so well. You're not going to be uh, really surprised. No. You know, you know what their arguments are. You've already heard them. Well, and I've learned this. I've learned this the hard way. You know, my husband himself said to me, I can't talk to you when you're like this. Yeah. He said that to me. Your tone and you're like, he's like, it's grating on my nerves. Yes. And I'm like, you know what? He's right. Like if my tone is angry and uncontrolled and just a screaming like a banshee. Yeah. He's not going to listen. No. He's going to be like, you're annoying me. I'm right. And, and also, and you stop yelling. It's and annoying. also, too, you've also set the tone for the argument. Right. Right. You've already decided that this is going to be yeah. an argument. This is going to be a meltdown. This is going to be a mess of ugly emotions. Yeah. So you started it this way. Yeah. And now it's going to end. Not in your favor. Not in your favor. Guarantee you that. Yeah, guarantee you that. Right. <laughs> That's 100%, guys. These are not, these are not, not maybes. No. I they're... mean, you can think of it. I mean, I remember once I had an argument with somebody and. She said, she said to me, did I say this before? She, she was really mad at me, young girl. Mm-hmm. I was kind of looking after. And she was like, so what you're saying is I'm supposed to have no emotions? And I said, well, that would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and, she said, she, and she was just like, I said, I said, I want you to think about this for one minute. What have your emotions ever done, done for you? you? Yeah. You name a time. Where they benefited you. Unless your emotion is for God. Yes. That is the only time. And you save all your emotion for God. God. All your love. All your love. All your tears. All your joy. Yeah. You save all that for God. 
and let him handle it. Right. You know, that's what I think anyways. Yes. No, I, I'm not, and I'm not saying walk around and be emotionless. No, no. Like you can show your family, obviously show your family love, obviously show your, but you know. You need to have control You need to have over the it. control. So that when you're and happy, actually, you show your happiness. And actually that works the other way too. Right. Over the top, happy craziness. Yeah. Can be just as annoying as anger. Right. Okay. You know, these people you know. that come in, hey, wonderful, oh, you know, and like. That can be just as annoying, too. Yeah, like, okay, take that, it down that's, or not. That's uncontrolled I'm as not, well. And I'm not feeling this joy right now. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you being here over the top joyful is just agitating me. Yeah. You know, so. Think of it Think of it like an annoying kid's cartoon where <laughs> the characters are so happy and they're in your face. The color pink is beautiful. Yeah. Like, if somebody talked to you like that in real life all day, yeah. Would you not want to be like, I can't talk to this person anymore? No, it's just too... ridiculous. They're stupid. So, you're, you know, like... so your emotions in, at every level, you have them, but they have to be in control. Right. You have to control them. And so as soon as you've let your emotions get away from you, you have to pray, think about it. You know, how do I step this back? Yeah. You know, how, how do I get control? And, you know, the rule of thumb is prayer and sacrifice. Yes. It's just always prayer and, and sacrifice. Right. So. so. Okay. I don't know how we got off on that. But well, okay. we were talking about a, they we talking the can, about? being a candid soul. Oh, the candid soul. That's, that's right. That you're, from, right. That's what it is. That's, that's being a candid soul. Right. You be joyful when you're supposed to be joyful. You be annoyed. Like, and when I say be annoyed, say, yeah, that's really bad. Yeah. You know, when you, when you're supposed to be annoyed and, you know, you do the things, but you, but you're in control of it. Yeah. I just wanted to bring that back to what we read because I got way off there and I couldn't bring it back. Okay. You can bring it back. I can bring it back. Okay, quote. Unfortunately, it is very difficult for women to renounce the desire of pleasing. This desire is for them nearly the same thing that ambition is for men. And there is no sentiment against which they, they ought to guard more carefully than this, as it calmly betrays them into the mo most lamentable faults. A married woman should aim only at pleasing her husband. An unmarried woman should wish to please him only whom God has destined to be her partner. End quote. Right. Yeah. So this is, this was when I realized we were talking, talking about, about flirting. flirting. Yeah. Right. So, so pleasing. Yeah. So, flirting. you know, you're a married woman and you're just like, you know, all the, oh, you know, the boys are whatever, you know, yeah. or, or, you know, your husband's boss or whoever yeah. i don't even know and you're just like aren't i cute and he's yeah. like oh aren't you cute you know, yeah whatever you know and, yeah. it, and there's no purpose to this except for you to feel great about yourself, yourself or something right yeah. and it should never happen. happen like it shouldn't you shouldn't be after these attentions, attentions. yeah right whether even whether you're single or i mean if you're married that's really really bad mm -hmm. but if you're single like it says only God, who God has destined to be her partner. Mm -hmm. Now, and I'm going to point out multiple times we've heard this in this book, destined to be her partner. partner. Yeah. Like there is a particular person, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And we should never, I mean, if we have that faith in God, we should understand it. And especially if God has allowed us to walk up to the altar of God and marry somebody, mm -hmm. you know, God has allowed that. Yeah. You know, do not, what's that, what's the line, what God has joined Just together, together let, let no man put us under. under. Yeah. I mean, that means God had allowed had that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. So we have to take that very, very seriously. No matter what kind of bum he allowed to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does allow yeah, that. He does allow it. And it's, <laughs> every time you think about it, this is for the salvation of my soul. Right. And others. And hopefully. others. Um, okay, quote, it is not indeed unlawful for a woman to aspire to the esteem and respect of those with whom she has to live. It is even her duty to avoid carefully whatever may displease them and to endeavor without affection to be at all times agreeable, end quote. Right. So it's her, it's her duty, duty. right? To, to be agreeable. To be agreeable, right? right? You want me to keep reading? You had to stop Yeah, there. just, just, uh, yeah, just go. Keep okay. reading there. Quote, there should be nothing in her person, her words, her actions, or her countenance calculated to shock or offend those in her company. But if the desire to please so natural to her is 
fixed upon any one man in particular, or if she asks of the men around her anything else than esteem and respect, she, dis she departs from the line of duty. Her guilt commences, and she may rest assured that from this moment the opinion they may have formed of her is lessened, and the esteem they entertain for her is diminished." End quote. Right, so, I mean, it's, the flirting is shocking and offending behavior. Yeah. Like, that's what they're saying it is. Yeah. Right, so, so you're trying to go after a man. Yeah. By batting your eyebrows and giggling and, and doing all the silly stuff that, you know. You that know. one does when they're trying to land a husband. I mean, there's all kinds of things that women do. Like, they flick, they'll flick their hair yeah. or they'll move their lips. Their yeah. over their lips or yeah. Oh, yeah. you know all this stuff that entices right and men are just like they become like marshmallow <laughs> fools because a woman is doing this stuff yeah. right and um and i think what the book is saying is that's on you yeah and that's and they're calling that shocking, shocking and, and offending oh, offended uh, yeah offending behavior yeah, yeah. So, you know, whether you're, you know, you bend down in a certain... And women know. Like, I know women yeah. know. You we know, know, ladies. We know we what know. it is. You know, we know when we're doing it, too. Yeah. I mean, I haven't done it for a long, long time. <laughs> but I have done it. You well, know? we all have. It's how you get a husband. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we know. <laughs> I know you know, ladies. We, if you're married, you know. You know. And so. even if you're not, if you're trying to get somebody, you know. You and, know these and, little things And our do. book is telling us, unfortunately, I wasn't prepared. I thought that, I, honestly, I thought that's what you do. Didn't you think that's what you do? What? Flirt. Yeah. Like you thought that, you know, you'll entice him. Some, yeah. You With the, you know. Yeah. A little grin here, a little, a little grin there, a little movement of the hands there, a little mm -hmm. flick of the hair. Well, and you know, like I, I just even remember when I was dating my husband. Yeah, there were things he said that I did that he liked. Like, and I'm talking little things, like you know, the way I would grab my hair and twist it around the, over my shoulder. Yeah, like you say, I really like when you do that, and you're like, really? Wow. Oh, okay. You know, like those little things, like you know. Yeah. Yes, not like because you, you're enticing them, but also what you're doing is you're losing esteem and respect from your husband, even. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, oh. that's what it says here. Okay, the flirting loses the esteem and the respect. Yeah, you want esteem and you respect. You want, you want respect? Okay. You don't well, want. Well, I get what you're saying. I think I get what you're saying. It puts you down a level. Yes. See, you're not lifting things higher. Yeah, you're, you're putting, putting things them lower. down. Yeah. Okay. Right? You know, even though he's fallen all over his, his feet, feet to get near you. you. Yeah. You know, so. Okay. The quote, the woman who is engrossed with the desire of pleasing must necessarily neglect the important duties of the family and of the Christian life. A stranger to repose her heart becomes agitated and discontented. To express the melancholy state to which a woman is reduced by the inordinate desire of pleasing, we say that she is vain. That is, that is, there is an emptiness in her conduct. A void has been made in her mind, in her heart, and in her whole life. End quote. Right. She's vain. She's vain. So, I mean, and, and people have seen, too, a flirty woman that's married. Oh, yeah. You know, and she comes in and she grabs all the attention. The attention. Even the married men. Like, I've seen that. So, even just in your mind, just think for one second how you're making, never mind the men. Yeah. Never mind the men. How you're making other women feel. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Right. I like, mean, and, and you're just, you're, you're really not a serious woman. No. Right? There's you, no esteem. There's no respect. Right? And yeah. you're neglecting the duties of the family and the Christian lifestyle. Yeah. Right? So. Okay. Quote. If women reflected on the import, the import of the word vanity, they would understand all the disorder and guilt implied in the vice which it expresses. We call vain that which has no substance, no consistency, which is mere appearance and shadow, end quote. All right, there's my favorite word again, disorder, mm -hmm. right? Disorder. So every time we come across these things that sometimes we grew up thinking were normal, yeah, we come to find out are actually considered a disorder. Yeah. That is putting things out of order. Mm -hmm. The flirting is vanity. It's a disorder. It's putting things out of order. It's making you not be whole. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. 
All right, quote, a vain woman is one whose mind is a stranger to serious thoughts, whose heart is destitute of elevated and generous sentiments, whose life is fine and shorn of noble and distinguished deeds. Vanity alters the primitive constitution of the soul. It lowers the natural elevation of the mind and bends its thoughts towards the earth. While the heart under it, lighting influence soon loses that admirable boy buoyancy which once gave it a direction towards heaven and is borne down to the follies of this world like the withered branches of a plant which we see bending to the earth from the effects of the winter's blast end quote end of chapter yeah right so that's basically a, a summing up of the mm -hmm. whole thing of vanity and pleasing which yes. is flirting which right is flirting Right. So, you know, you're lowering your mind, you're losing your self-esteem, mm -hmm. you know, you're a person who's not serious. You're a basic airhead. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want to be careful that you're never doing that. Mm -hmm. And if you have a tendency to do that, like sometimes we get in the habit of that's just the way we behave, like especially if we're pretty. I mean, and, and I know a lot of women struggle with this and I know it always comes back to the biggest from what I've heard, whenever this topic comes up, especially for married women, uh -huh. the biggest thing that gets thrown out there, well, I have a duty to impress my husband. Yeah. But what did the book just tell us? Yeah, yeah. What did it just tell us? You have a duty to go to higher things. Yes, because when you're doing these things, like, and you know what? I'm sorry, but like, and this is just my own humble opinion. But if your husband needs these things to love you, yeah, if he needs you to be vain and he needs you to this, I mean, at the end of the day, who, no matter what, has to come first before your husband? You're talking about the extravagances in dress. Yes. Mostly. Well, Not because that falls under vanity. Yes, right. Most, uh, most women, I, I'm assuming most women. I haven't seen anybody flirt in a long no, time. No, but I mean even... But I mean the extravagance in dress. But mom, it's a, mi it's a misconception of the modern world to say, you got to flirt with your husband. You got to keep the love alive. You got to keep the, you know, that yeah. to me is a... M and maybe I'm wrong in saying this, but it's a new age, modern misconception. Okay. To me. That's right. But you do have to make sure he knows he's loved. Loved. That's not flirting, though. Right. That is not flirting. Like you're under you know serious what? obligation I, to make your husband feel loved. I know. And because in the past, I have been guilty of that. Yeah. I have been guilty of that. And it was put before my eyes that my husband didn't think I loved him. Right. And you know how you, you, you show your husband that you love him? Yeah. You walk right up to him and you say... Dear, you know I really love you. Yes. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yes. You don't need to bat your eyelashes at him. You don't need to put on 10 pounds of makeup. You don't need to. Yeah. You know, and because I'm going to tell you, I've stopped wearing makeup recently. Yes. Completely. For other reasons. My husband hasn't even said anything. Yeah. He hasn't noticed. I don't think he's noticed. Honestly, he hasn't <laughs> said a thing. Right. Not a word. Like, you don't wear makeup anymore. Oh, you don't wear makeup anymore. Because the reason why I'm doing it is for something else. Yeah. For a grace for something else. As a sacrifice for someone else. Yes. That I need in my life. You know, it, it's, I'm trying to lessen my own vanity and do this for somebody else. Right. So do you think for one second that God's going to take that? Yeah. And then have my husband come to me and say, man, you're looking really ugly these days. You're looking pretty <laughs> sad. You know, like I'm just saying, I think what, and it all comes back to, and I know we've said this in the podcast a lot, because you will get people that say, well, what about this? Well, what about this? Ladies, please put some faith and trust in God. Yes. Please. That your sacrifices. That your sacrifices will be will do what they're supposed to do. And if they don't do that, and if you don't see the return right away, know that they're going to do something else. Right. God is never going... I, I refuse, absolutely refuse to believe in a God, to believe in God. I'm not going to say a God, because uh, that's... Sorry, I shouldn't have said that, but this is when I'm talking to my husband. I say these things because, you know, <laughs> he's not Catholic. But I refuse to believe that God will not 
will take a sacrifice and go, well, thanks for doing that, but not this time. Yeah. You know, see yeah. ya on your way. Come, no, no way. No, 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 no way. You There's have. no way. You have to believe that God takes every sacrifice, everything, every little tiny thing we do. There's a pebble in my shoe today and I'm walking through the grocery store and I'm like, that is driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, leave the pebble there, leave the pebble there. And then I stopped and I took my shoe off and dumped the pebble out. And I was like, dang it, you should have left that pebble there. I should have left that pebble in my shoe. Yeah. Because God, I know God would have taken that sacrifice right. and done something with it. And I know. and and I, But I will say I did walk around with it for about right. 40 seconds before. <laughs> the, the bending. But I'm just using that as an example. No, like, prayer is good. And I, I remember... I did go on a little rant about prayer once many years ago. And I'm like, okay, I don't think I really meant it that way because it was a realization that why are we praying? Uh, God does what he wants anyway, <laughs> you yeah. know, but that uh, there's a very, very specific reason to pray. Mm -hmm. First of all, go, it's a virtue to adore God. Mm -hmm. So God must be glorified. So prayer must happen. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you ask for what you need. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, those are our, those are the yeah. four reasons to pray. Adoration. Petition, adoration, uh, reparation. Should Petition. Forgiveness. Did I always say that? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay, I might have said a bunch of things. Adoration. <laughs> adoration. adoration. Um, petition. Petition. No, there's something before petition. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is maybe Thanksgiving. Reparation. Is second. Reparation. That's yeah. What I was okay. So those are your four reasons, yeah. right? But so why you pray? But I am telling you, if you want results, mm -hmm. sacrifice. Vice. Bend, especially when you bend your, your will. will. Yes. When you bend your will, that's when the graces really come. Okay. Side note. Did you know what the next chapter is? What? No, Did I you don't. know that? No. Ladies, hold tight. This is going to blow <laughs> your mind. The next chapter is called The Will, The Spirit of Sacrifice. Oh, <laughs> Oh, hey, so well, look at that. That's funny. Okay, we're so we're, we're going to lead right, into, right into that. And so, you know what? I'm going to say maybe this might be my favorite chapter because I've learned in the last little while that I really need to do more sacrifice, that I just don't do enough. I'm reading all these saints stories and it's like I don't do enough. Yeah. And, I, and I sit there and I meditate on my life and I'm like, I am not doing near enough. And I think that is the, I think, I think, you know, you see it in the groups. You see it in the set of conscious society. We know the prayer is going on. Yeah. We know the prayer is going on. But if, in my humble opinion, what this world is missing is the sacrifice. The sacrifice. The denial the of denial self. The denial of self. And maybe it's we have too many modern conveniences. Maybe things have been made too easy for us. Yeah. But we all know, and I don't want to let a podcast go without saying it. We know that the saints at the end times will outshine those. Yeah, it will be the greatest saints of all. The greatest saints of all time. So we got to think to ourselves. Yeah. How's that going to happen? How's that going to happen? You know, Cause, so. Because well, I expect to be in that number. Well, you know what? And this is going to sound, I hope I'm going to say this as humbly as possible. I pray that I'm in that. Yeah, you know, so that uh, means. Who doesn't want to be the, who doesn't want to be, and, and, and I'm saying this from a humble spot for the greater honor and glory of God because I love God so much. Yeah. I love God so much that I want to be in that number. Yeah. Like when the I, saints go marching gonna, in. Are we going to break into I want right to now? be in that number. But I really, really do. Yeah. I really do. And you know what? It's, it's sad. But you know, to think that when I was younger, I used to fear death. And I used to say, you know, I want to live a long life. I want to do that. And my prayer is like, you know, how great would it be to be a martyr? Yeah. To die for God. Yeah, to no, give I, your life for God. I know, but. And I pray that if that were to happen to me, I would be able to do it. Because I don't think I could. No, I know. I, I don't actually ever pray for that because I'm too afraid of my own weaknesses. <laughs> well, no, I, what I pray though is I just pray that prayer after communion. Yeah. To accept whatever death right. comes for me. Right, right, right. That, to know that God has it in control and whatever God's will be done. And I, I pray that I accept the death that God has destined for me. Exactly. Whatever it may be. Yeah. You know, and I remember when we were kids and you telling us that you wanted to die of cancer. 
<laughs> you did. Oh, well, I always, I have you always had, wanted to die. My mom, <laughs> I remember being a little kid. This is how my mom is so real. Here you are, little kid, and your mom is like, I want to die of cancer. Because you know what? If I die of cancer, then I have all that time to make myself ready. <laughs> I always and I and my greatest fear is actually dying in a car accident. Yeah, you know that I would not that that's too sudden. It's too sudden, and, and I know. wouldn't have enough to suffer. Yes, yeah. So you there know. you go. Anyways, let's, yeah. Well, let's wrap this. I'm up. very <laughs> consistent. Anyway, I've there, wanted yeah. to die of cancer for a very long time. Yeah. If there's one thing you could say about my mom, she's consistent. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh. been the same person she was. <laughs> no, she no. No, I've People done a lot of spir- changing. I have spiritual done a lot growth. of changing. A lot so. of spiritual growth. Um, but anyways, I guess we'll wrap it up there because we're 10 minutes over an hour. So we'll let all you ladies get on with your good Christian duties and <laughs> and not pleasing others. <laughs> not pleasing yeah. others. I, I'm just saying that. I'm not making fun. I just like to keep it light at the end. That's all. I just. Yeah. I Because I, you know what? I was reading this book, The Cure of Ours. The saints were. They joked. Yeah, I know. They made jokes and they made, you know, and you are to keep things, you are to keep things light at times. Yeah. And I you like can, light. you know, like it, light. it keeps the hope and it keeps the lightness. So anyways, anyways, um, so we'll leave it there. But um, until next week, yeah. hopefully, with God willing, we'll <laughs> be with you. I, I got everybody do some extra sacrifices. So you're all geared up. You're all geared up for <laughs> next week's chapter. <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> so we'll leave it there but we all hope we hope that you all have a very blessed and holy week may our lord uh bless you and our lady guide you always and saint Teresa, pray, pray for, for us, us.